Hey guys, this is Evan here at PAX East 2014 in Boston. I'm here with Tyler Sigmund, co-founder of Red Hook Studios up in Vancouver, working on Darkest Dungeon, is that right? That's right. Darkest Dungeon is an RPG about the psychological stresses of adventuring. Yeah, so you know, roguelikes are a huge trend right now. I'm pretty curious what made you guys want to pursue mental health as a mechanic in a roguelike. It's really interesting. I think uh, we're both, uh, Chris, uh, who came up with the idea originally, and he's the artist on the game, uh, we're both just huge fans of RPGs in general. We've been playing them our whole lives. I mean, I've been playing back since the days of, like, first Bard's Tale, you know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we felt like, you know, it's such an awesome genre. There's so much going on. But somewhere along the way, the, the, what the heroes are thinking got lost. So that we started, you know, thinking about uh, great drama that inspires us, like Band of Brothers or moments in Aliens, you know, when people are freaking out, and realized that, Someone's ability just to swing a sword is really only half the story. It's their willingness and ability to stay in the fight, too. So we started thinking about gamifying um, effectively their mental health as well. Yeah, and so, I mean, the way you're explaining it to me, you're going to have this sort of roster and stable of adventurers, basically, that you can rotate almost along the lines of XCOM. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's very similar to XCOM in structure. There's, there's an overarching goal that you want to achieve, which is basically to... Uh, to reclaim your lands that have been completely corrupted and overrun by all these horrible creatures. There's a bit of a Lovecraftian influence. Um, and so you play the part of this heir to this estate who's hiring all these adventurers to cleanse everything out. And uh, you manage a stable. And each time you put together a party of four heroes and you send them on a quest, which usually lasts about 30 minutes. And then when they come back from the quest, their, their state, including their mental health, is persistent. Like if someone is stressed out, they're still gonna be stressed out. And so then the uh, big challenge of the game is not only handling like the turn-based tactical combat, stuff like that, but it's keeping them all together. And so sometimes you need to rest them, you need to send them to the tavern to drink or to the church to pray. And then uh, while they're doing that, you might tag in a B team or recruit a new hero and send them down. Yeah, as we can see up here, like. There's a, a stress bar. I'm not sure what you guys are calling it specifically. Stress, stress yeah. great. And, and a health bar right above that. So the way you explain it to me, uh, once that bar reaches capacity, basically, either a positive or negative effect will trigger on the character. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, what, really the concept is, is sort of built from obser observing human nature, which is, you know, stress builds in people. And then when it reaches kind of a key peak, I guess, Usually one of two things happens, you know, people become under sort of the influence of various, uh, you know, afflictions is what we're calling them. These are things like fear, or paranoia, or irrationality, or abusiveness, selfishness. Um, or this is the moment where real heroism happens. And even though the game is about a lot of sort of dark things that we want to you to deal with, it's really about the heroic moments, right? You know? So along the lines of XCOM, you almost want people to have those instances where they build a really relationship built on ownership with those characters, where it's sort of like, you know, self-authored narrative almost of these characters. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we, we want you to bond and we want you to, to feel a sense. Like, we encourage you to name your characters after your friends and loved ones, you know, just like the, lots of people do in XCOM because that's really fun. And there is permadeath. That's one of the roguelike elements. So, uh, you know, for example, you may become quite fond of the Plague Doctor and uh, uh, Paracelsus here. And now you really don't want her to go crazy. You really don't want things to happen and to lose her. And now that raises the stakes of all the decisions uh, of your doing because you know, maybe she could rush to the front and do an attack and it might kill the boss, but you might lose that particular play doctor. So we want you to bond with them and care, but ultimately things are going to happen and you're going to lose some. And, and that's, that's kind of what the game's about, is making the most of uh, when some bad things happen. It's definitely not a game for people who, you know, want everything neatly ordered and always just right. It's, it's a game of endurance and kind of making the most uh, of, of what re adventuring really would be like, we think. Can you actually mention also some of the uh, mental status effects a character's going to experience, positive and, ne and negative? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I mentioned, like, for example, one, one uh, common one that uh, a character may undergo, or undergo is fear. So fear could manifest in the game, for example, if your best here's a crusader, he's a frontline fighter. If he becomes fearful, he's going to start doing things like during the turn-based combat, he might move backwards. And, um, you know, it's all very logical stuff uh, that when you think about, like, what the theme of their act-out is, but then um, they all have gameplay kind of ramifications. So now you're sitting here trying to manage turn-based combat with someone who's afraid to fight or doesn't want to fight or maybe is over-eager to fight and but is lashing out to their own partners. They'll say things and comment on their, their state of how they feel. And sometimes that can stress out the other characters. So for example, uh, you know, fear is infectious, but so is courage. Um, so if someone you know, says something like, oh, we're all gonna die, 
you'll see that some of the others may take stress damage. So it can lead to these cascading effects of where someone starts worrying and then they all start worrying and now they're all bickering amongst themselves and then they begin, there can be things where they start hating each other, like, you know, th these sorts of things. We want you to manage because um, effectively no one is baggage free. So as and as you adventure with us uh, with one particular instance, uh, then they, they acquire these quirks. They can be everything as little as like they just eat twice as they're an overeater and now you have to bring extra provisions for that character. Or they might be, you know, uh, sort of like a berserker. They may just in the thick of combat just get incredibly enraged, but then it's hard to control them. And a person is in a way the sum of all their little quirks. There's positive quirks as well, too, and so you can kind of manage those and do a little bit of character crafting with, like, learning how different things in the dungeons can either create or take away quirks. And so then you, uh, part of that is the strategy of the game where, I mean, really there's a lot of sort of board gamey uh, or system-based elements where you might realize, okay, I'm going to take this character down, I'm going to hope to find an Iron Maiden, open the Iron Maiden, it's going to give them this disease, but the disease has a benefit of all these other things. So we want you to, like, figure out through exploration. Oh, here we're showing some quirks, for example. He's got a quick draw clerk quirk, which makes him uh, very fast in the first round of combat. So these will build up and you'll start uh, differentiating each instance of each class. Yeah, it's a really interesting angle on the roguelike, just adding sort of these permanent status effects or semi-permanent, I guess, is more accurate. Yeah. Um, so where should people go if they want to learn more about the game? You guys recently completed a Kickstarter. Congratulations. Um, time and a lot of awesome support so we're very thankful to all the backers <laughs> and uh, when can we expect a full release or are you guys gonna be releasing on early access uh, yeah so you can go to darkestdungeon.com basically to get all the information of the game um, Kickstarter page actually has quite a lot of good stuff as well just for uh, you know good collection of info but uh, you, we're planning to do early access on Steam uh, PC Mac and uh, we're gonna we're targeting late fall for that currently so sometime around the October ish time frame and uh, and so if you're the type of gamer that wants to get involved in seeing content roll out as it comes, so we'll be rolling out classes and enemies and dungeons and items and skills, then, I mean, we encourage you to check out Early Access. You can actually still pre-order the game at darkestdungeon.com uh, and still get some of the benefits from the Kickstarter people, uh, or for the Kickstarter backers got, like if you're into art books and, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's, that's the place for all things Darkest Dungeon, uh, at Darkest Dungeon on Twitter as well. All right, Tyler, thanks for walking us through it. Awesome, thank you.